Okay, we're, we're here today to update you on where we're at with this investigation, but another purpose is to make sure that the public understands that this is not a school shooting, all right? I'm not going to go into the time and the day. You know everything that, that happened uh, last night and at what time we were there. The bottom line is this was a specific targeted shooting. The people that were involved in this shooting were looking for these two individuals. Now, they had some information that they very well might be at the football game, but they could have been at a bowling alley. If you remember several years ago, we had a similar incident where somebody was shot in the middle of the Boynton Mall. These type of things, because of the people that are involved in it, happen at a time and a place where they can find each other. Now, as to motive, we're looking at several things that led us to believe why these people were targeted. But these are two adults that were assaulted by two other people that they've had past dealings with not in the most pleasant of circumstances, and that's why they were out for each other. The bad guys in this were not there to shoot students. They were not there to go in and randomly kill a bunch of people. They know who they were looking for. They just happened to be able to find them on the perimeter of that football game. So the biggest thing that we want, the chief and I want everybody to know is, it's safe to go to school Monday. All right, there's no active shooter running around out there that's gonna come back to the schools. They accomplish what they want to accomplish. Now, fortunately for us, one of the victims is uh, not in critical condition and we're gonna interview him. The other one is probably gonna make it and we're gonna interview them. They, they know who did this and we're gonna find out who did it and we're gonna apprehend them. So last night was, I'm sure, uh, chaotic. Uh, it was stressful for the people that were there, and that's the bad thing. The good thing is the protocols that we have in place uh, here at the Sheriff's Office and working in conjunction with the school police was handled very, very well, and uh, we've even received a lot of comments from people that were out there saying, you know what, the response was great, and once you guys were there, we, we felt a whole lot better. So having said that, I'm gonna let uh, Chief Kitsaro from the school police make a few comments. Thank you, Sheriff Bradshaw. I want to follow up and just do make a couple of points on what the sheriff was saying. This un unfortunately was a an act of community violence that happened to spill onto a school campus. When you look at where the incident occurred, it was probably 50 yards off of Main Road and outside the secure area of our uh, stadium. So I agree with the sheriff on that. This was this was not a school shooting incident. The second thing that's really important to know is that the uh, emergency response worked perfectly. Uh, we, were, we had school police officers on the scene. They immediately, with the sound of gunfire, moved to where the gunfire was taking place. First unit was on the scene within 15, 20 seconds. They were communicating over the radio, asking for assistance. The sheriff's department was on the scene shortly thereafter. The communication worked the way it was supposed to. Sheriff's Department was taking operations, we were taking logistics, plannings, putting the school in code red lockdown, reunification, there was a lot of things happening at the same time. And uh, I wanna give uh, my commendation to those that were on the scene, the commanders that were on the scene did an exceptional job uh, of uh, performing their duties. So uh, again, this is community violence that spilled onto a, uh, barely spilled onto a high school campus. Sheriff? Yeah, and having said that, um, I've had a conversation with the chief, and I did talk to uh, the school superintendent, Dr. Fernoy, and uh, next week we're going to have some in-depth conversations on how we might enhance event security uh, at events. Um, we have some ideas that we're going to put forth, and um, I think it's time for the, the, the events to have a little bit more security. You know, we see this all the time. We've made the airports really good, so what happens is the bad guys go down into baggage areas or out front. At concerts, things aren't happening inside, they're happening outside on the street where people are hitting people with cars. So we've had to expand our perimeters and our, and our bubble of security at events, not only to what's happening with people going inside the events, 
but what's happening on the larger perimeter around the events. So I think this is a good opportunity for us to sit down with the school police and say, you know what, we need to think a little bit more about event security along the larger perimeter, not only with people going inside and, and, and make it a little more secure. If I, could if I could just add on to that, yep. tomorrow uh, afternoon the superintendent and the leadership team will be meeting with the high school principals to talk about how we move forward, what it looks like in the, in the next week or so, and an important part of that discussion will be exactly what the sheriff was talking about. So we're going to start that process tomorrow afternoon. Okay, we'll take a few questions and then I'll let you talk to some of the uh, elected officials that are here from uh, the county. Obviously, it wasn't just the shooting, it was the stampeding that became a safety concern as well. You said that you thought the response went smoothly. Is there anything that you think that you guys could do to maybe mitigate that problem? Obviously, people get nervous now even just hearing a noise and rushing through. Yeah, um, well, you know, anytime you have a large group of people and they get into a panic, it's going to be chaotic at the, at the outset. I think that we've got it under control last night in a very timely fashion where we were able to get people and say, listen, this is a reunification area. I mean, we even went to the extent when people got on the buses to go back, we escorted the buses back to the high schools. So we, we calmed the situation as expeditiously as we could. There's no way that you could ever prevent a panic of people when you have something like that where they think their lives are in danger. You saw that at the Las Vegas thing. But is that something that you said, you said there's going to be discussions about increased security at school events. Could there be sort of activities where you could sort of test the response to avoid those type of stampeding injuries? Because those create safety concerns as well. Well, as the sheriff said, those are always safety concerns. You know, one of the things we do as law enforcement officers is when this process is over, we get together afterwards and we do what we call an after action or a debriefing. We get the players around the table and talk about what went well, what can we improve on. Uh, but, you know, again, you've got thousands of people in that stadium and they start panicking, you know, to get them to the safe places that we got them to. We had the reunification process mm -hmm. set up. You know, that's a challenging event. And, you know, the, and the Sheriff's Department bought an uh, unbelievable amount of resources to help us uh, accomplish that mission and, and you know nothing will ever be perfect but it was it was pretty darn effective last night um, as far as football games or um, school events sporting events are there ambulances or fire rescue trucks stationed on the field or I think it happened that was the protocol years ago but I don't know if that's the same yes yeah, so the fire departments there uh, for the for the any injuries that might occur during the game or injuries in the stand. Obviously, this was something a little bit different. But so they were there like at the game last night? Correct. As okay. far as I know. Okay. Yes. I know years past, like Garden Tavari used to be a big rival, so you, they would have extra security, extra people, extra deputies. Last night, it was supposedly a known rival uh, football game. Was there extra security already in place before? There was extra security in place ahead of time, but let's get back to the point that this had nothing to do with the rivalry. Mm -hmm. okay, this was community violence you know, that what could have happened anywhere, it just so happened to be in the parking lot of a school, but it could have happened anywhere. Yeah. This was not a, a random act of violence by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, usually what the rival was, you get fist fights. Yeah. You know, it's what we did when we were in high school. We didn't like the other team, we got the fist fight. <laughs> you guys mentioned that there were, this was a fight between two individuals and two individuals. How close are you to identifying those two individuals? Are you just waiting to talk to those victims or? Are there witnesses you've interviewed? Were, is there surveillance video you guys are looking at? The answer to that is yes to all of it. Okay. Any mm -hmm. message to the public? I know that even though this was not a random act, still it was obviously something in a very public place that left a lot of people unnerved. Any message to the community members, to the people who were there at that game last night? Well, I think the message should be clear about a couple of things. Number one is we care about your child's safety. We work together to make sure that is a top priority. As I said before, you look at the response between the school police department and the sheriff's department, it was quick, it was effective, and, uh, and it was efficient. And so, um, you, know, we you know, we're gonna be there to help with that safety. As far as getting back to school, the sheriff made a very good point. You know, just to, it'll be a regular school day on Monday. This is not a school shooter. However, knowing that we're still taking the uh, steps within the school district to make sure we have counselors available, we'll have extra presence on campus. We'll do those things that you would probably expect us to do. But I wanted to be clear to everyone that the, your children are safe. Come to school on Monday. 
Okay, it, it, we will be there, and this is not a school shooting situation. In the larger aspect, I don't care if it's at the football game, whether you go to the Dolphins football game, whether you go to the mall, wherever you're at, be aware of your surroundings, okay? Like you just said, when you go to places, think, you know, if something bad happens here, how do I get out of here? Don't just show up and just flop down in the seat and say, well, you know, I don't know. Is there an exit over there? Well, they tell you on a plane, two exits to the front, two exits to the back. You know, figure out how you're going to get out of a place if something bad happens, okay? But the main thing is just be aware of your surroundings. Now, we'll leave you with one other thing here before we finish. There's an app that we have called Protect Connect. All right? You could report anything anonymously on that. A lot of people there last night. We know that there were some people that couldn't, couldn't be too far around what happened, that either know what happened, saw what happened. We need to hear from them. And you can do that on that app. It, you'll be anonymous. We just want pieces of information. We need everything that we can get in. Okay, thanks, folks.